Welcome to a second video on trig integrals involving secant and tangent. Just to review, all these techniques are based upon the identity tangent squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta, or if we solve it for tangent squared, we'd have tangent squared theta equals secant squared minus one. In part one, we discussed these three guidelines for evaluating integrals involving secant and tangent. Let's go ahead and review them. If the power of secant is even, we will save a secant squared factor and convert the remaining factors to tangents. Number two, if the power of tangent is odd, we'll save a secant tangent factor and convert the remaining factors to secants. And then lastly, if there are no secant factors and the power of tangent is even and positive, we'll convert a tangent squared factor to a secant squared minus one factor. And then if needed, we can repeat this. So let's go and take a look at a couple more questions. This first one is gonna be a definite integral. And we should notice right away that the power on secant is even. So we're going to save a secant squared factor and convert the remaining factors to tangents using the identity that secant squared theta is equal to one plus tangent squared theta. So let's go ahead and rewrite this by saving a factor of secant squared. So we're gonna save the secant squared two x factor and replace secant squared two x with one plus tangent squared two x. Now if we let u equal tangent two x, this should work out nicely. Then differential u is gonna be equal to secant squared two x times two dx. Remember, we do have to apply the chain rule here. Now our integrand only contains secant squared two x dx, so I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by two. So one half du is equal to secant squared two x dx. So this is equal to one half du, and then if u is tangent two x, we're gonna have one plus u squared here. Let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of u. I'm gonna leave off these limits of integration temporarily because these are in terms of x and we are going to rewrite this in terms of u. So remember all of this is equal to one half to u. So I'll factor the one half out. Now we'll go ahead and find the antiderivative. This would be u plus u to the third over three Let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of x. So we'll have one half tangent two x. This would be plus one sixth tangent to the third two x. And we need to evaluate this at pi over eight and zero. First we'll replace x with pi over eight well, two times pi over eight would be pi over four. The tangent of pi over four would be one, so we have one half times one, would be one half, plus one six times tangent cubed two x. Well, again, when x is pi over eight, this would be the tangent of pi over four, which is equal to one. One cubed is still one times one sixth, so we have one sixth. And then when x is equal to zero, we'd have tangent zero here and tangent zero cubed here. Both of those would be zero, so we're gonna have zero plus zero. So this def integral is equal to one half plus one sixth. Well, one half is three sixths. Three sixths plus one sixth is four sixths, which simplifies to two thirds. Let's go and take a look at the graph of this function on the interval from zero to pi over eight. Since it is non-negative on this interval, that def integral does represent the area bounded by the function in the x-axis. So this blue area here is equal to two-thirds. Let's go and take a look at another example. On this integral here, we have an odd power of tangent, and the guidelines say that we're supposed to save a factor of secant tangent. But we don't have a factor of secant. But what we can do is start to introduce secants by replacing a tangent squared x with secant squared x minus one. So let's go ahead and do that and see if it's helpful. 
So we'd have tangent cubed x, and instead of tangent squared x, we'll have secant squared x minus one. Now we'll go ahead and distribute the tangent cubed x. Now in this first integral, we can go ahead and follow the guidelines by saving a factor of secant x tangent x. And for the second integral, we'll go ahead and replace another tangent squared x with secant squared x minus one. Now let's go ahead and distribute the tangent x in the second integral. So we'll have minus the integral of tangent x secant squared x. Minus the integral of negative tangent x, which will become plus the integral of tangent x. Now following these guidelines, we're gonna go ahead and replace this tangent squared x with secant squared x minus one in this integral. And then here we're gonna go ahead and save another factor of secant x tangent x. And the third integral we'll leave alone because there's a basic integration formula for tangent x. So what we did here is replace tangent squared x with secant squared x minus one. And then here we're saving a factor of secant x tangent x. Let's go ahead and take this over to the next screen, but when we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and distribute this secant x. So we'll have secant cubed x minus secant x. Notice the first two integrals have the extra factor of secant x tangent x. So now if we let u equal secant x, differential u is going to equal secant x tangent x dx. So this will be du in both cases and then we have everything else in terms of u. So let's go ahead and show that in terms of u. This would be u cubed minus u du minus the integral of, this would just be u du and the last integral is gonna stay the same as tangent x dx. So this is gonna be u to the fourth divided by four or one fourth secant to the fourth x. Remember u is equal to secant x minus u squared divided by two or one half secant squared x minus, this is also gonna be u squared divided by two, which is another one half secant squared x. And then lastly, the antiderivative of tangent x is equal to negative natural log absolute value of cosine x. And if that wasn't enough, these middle terms are like terms, so we can go ahead and combine those. We're gonna have one fourth secant to the fourth x minus, minus one secant squared x minus the natural log of the absolute value of cosine x plus c. So as you can see, some of these can be fairly involved, but at the same time, they can also be enjoyable. So I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.